Welcome, welcome everyone to a casted game of Age of Empires 4. And today, sporting in the north corner of the map, playing in yellow, we've got Lucifran playing as the Ottomans and his opponent in the south, playing in blue. We've got Vortex, his brother, playing as the English. Welcome, welcome everyone to Regions and the Empire Wars game mode. Wait a minute, what's happening on the minimap? Take a look, villagers heading forward. It's going to be a, a snazzy opening, an interesting opening for the English, sending three villagers, probably to get some outposts on the field and harass his opponent. Now the question is, what does he see? Obviously nothing just yet. Scout's going to accompany these villagers. Ah, uh, but this is not something we've seen all that often recently. Like, it used to be a done thing with the English against civilizations like HRE that obviously love getting that goal for Castle Age, but the Ottomans are a little bit different. He's going to be looking to count outposts first. The question is, does he look elsewhere? Does he try and harass the goal? Does he just put one on the on the stone outcropping? And it could be an option because the thing is, going on the stone outcropping is actually pretty decent against the Ottomans. Considering they need that stone for the military schools, right? So that's actually primarily the bonus for the Ottomans to get the military school for those free units. But they can't if he doesn't have access to stone. And that's what these three villagers are going to look to hope and achieve. All right, well, things have started lively today and uh, the two brothers battling it out, Lucifer and Vortex. Should be a banger of a game. We do see a follow-up with two Man at Arms just to protect those villagers and do some damage as well. Is she going to be able to take out that blacksmith? And it means that it's going to be another reinvestment of wood. Uh, I mean, well, we have to see if he actually takes it out completely or not. Only a scout and two men at arms so far. Uh, but there's that twin minaret madrasa. He's going to go up to the next stage now, Lucifer, and make sure that he can try and fight this back. But with the first outpost going up already almost, it's, it's always a bit tricky because if he decides to get arrow slits and upgrade it, it's a bit problematic. Now, I like this strategy from this English because like on the standard version of the game, when you don't have 23 villagers to start off with, you know, sending villagers forward takes a big, big hit on your overall economy. But just sending three villagers out of a total of 20 in your economy is obviously much less of a, a proportion. And so it's less risk attached to it, right? And so you can afford to be a bit more liberal with this sort of thing. And, and it, it, he's not so much under pressure to get huge amounts of value. But it, I mean, it looks like he's pretty, getting pretty much good value anyway. Because I'll get that second outpost on that stone outcropping. And that will uh, that will really harm Lucifer's ability to get further military schools. So really good start, promising start. He's going to try and repair that blacksmith, but he might lose a villager. No, nope, he gets the two imams using the vizier point. That's a nice touch there. Without the arrow slits in the outpost, it's uh, not going to be too dangerous just yet. But he's going to go around on the other side with the man at arms, and he might just get the blacksmith. A couple of sabahi do pop out now. He's built two stables. They're certainly looking to push this away, and Spimmon as well. Now, the blacksmith is on fire. The imams are going to come in. I think this is a position where Vortex might actually have to backtrack and head away. He's going to garrison inside the outpost for now. That's certainly the right play. He's got enough space as well to do so. The imam's not getting involved just quick enough. Uh, will he lose the Spearman? Oh, he just about heals him up in time. Now, this is such a cool opening for the English, because they've got a really good opening. They've got eight farms to start off with. We see a lot of villagers on stone there for Vortex. Looking like it's going to be a second town centre. And I really like this build because what it does, this kind of aggression early on with the outpost, it actually got the blacksmith in the end, but, but it puts pressure on the Ottomans to deal with this first and it distracts from what Vortex might be doing. And what he's doing is getting a second town centre. That will scale the economy. And, and by the time that these outposts are dealt with, you know, that second town centre should be up and running and live and uh, the economy should be ahead. Uh, but it's going out to deer pack there for Lucifron, looking to take advantage of the free food on the map. And he actually dropped a market as well. Maybe looking to buy that stone. We'll have to see. Because uh, it's a bit difficult for him to mine stone at the moment, especially with the arrows that's coming in on both outposts as well. And he's actually going to get the uh, the upgrade for the fortification. That's going to be difficult to deal with. He's going to need to get into a siege engineering and rams to take that out. But in any case, at the moment... He's looking to just get some archery rangers, just pump out units. Now, with this second uh, town center decision here for Vortex, it's certainly an interesting one because it means that the way the game's going, it's going to be a big push from the Ottomans, most likely, or at least that's the attempt and the hope, if he's going to decide to stay in one town center. So a single town center Ottomans and the military production, he's got to pump out units, do some damage against the two town center English. I say that, we're taking it for granted, really. He's only got 180 stone in the bank. I mean, he's got eight villagers, so it's got to be a second town center. Question is whether it can be denied and whether Lucifer can put a little bit of pressure on him. Got plenty of units at home though, Vortex, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem for him to get that second town centre. But we'll have to see. 
Speaking of those units, they do start to move out a little bit. We'll keep an eye on these guys as they move across the map. Now, the map is regions. It's certainly something important to talk about is the resource distribution. You can see on the mini-map on the west side, you've got the deer pack. On the east side, you've got the berries. In the middle, you've got three gold veins, which are 8,000 gold. And essentially, whoever controls that is in a very strong position. Having said that, the English do get the enclosures upgraded in the Imperial Age from the mill, making sure that their farmers do actually access some gold for the civilization as well. But of course, getting that gold vein in the middle, securing that, is hugely important. And we'll see if Vortex can do that. It's got a decent number of units, actually. And it uh, looks like he's going to get that second town center on the deer pack. The Sibai are there, though, keeping an eye on it. There's a decent number of spearmen. And I think Vortex should be fine in this scenario. There's just too many spearmen to deal with here for the front. Unfortunate for him, but he can't deny the deer pack and the town center. So really nice and methodical play here by Vortex. Very, very nice indeed. Units head north into the protection of that outpost, which has been fortified as well. Where does Lucifer go from here? Looks like it's going to stay on the one town centre and let's put some aggression. Now, it does take time for that second town centre to pay for itself back and so it's not actually built yet, so it certainly takes time. But uh, I think we're going to be seeing a, a bit of pressure from the Ottomans for the next sort of 10-15 minutes. I think once we hit sort of the 25 minute, maybe, maybe I'm being a bit too liberal, maybe about 20 minutes from now. That's when that second town centre and the village account, if it rises significantly without too much damage taken, Vortex, that's when he will be in a commanding position to really bolster the forces of military and push back. And you get the feeling that the way the game's going to turn out, that pushback would be a bit too difficult to stop. So the Ottomans are a bit of a timer. It's got to do damage, got to do it early. Unless it goes super, super late game when village accounts are equalized for both players and the early advantage, eco advantage, doesn't make as much of an impact anymore. Is Spy going to dive on this though? They should be able to kill us all off and a bit unfortunate to lose those longbow, but it is what it is. It always happens with the English that if you overextend like this, you can certainly sustain some damage. going to kill some villagers though in the meantime, so this is a nice use of those units. They don't go and die in vain. Managed to get one villager at least. Good value considering the position. Now where are these villagers off to? That's what I would like to know. Okay, it's going to go for the White Tower. They're going for that castle age. It's a smart play going for two town centre white, uh, white Tower, rather, for a fast castle. Because, of course, as long as it stays in the feudal age, it's going to be outnumbered, is it, right? It's going to be outmassed. So the way to deal with that is to out-tech your opponent. And so getting to that castle age with the White Tower as well, with the defensive landmark, it means his second town center should be very nicely protected. Now, we do see English being very greedy today. But it's very similar on the rank ladder at the moment. The English do well at being greedy. We're seeing a very similar method here being played by Vortex. Uh, but with the additional outpost rush at the beginning of the game, it seems very effective doing that. White Tower does go up. Castle Age is in play. Loose Font struggling to get value. This is where things are interesting in this match because I think the meta generally at the moment with Age of Empires 4... It's very much sur surrounding greed. Like, two town centre is a very standard opening. You have to pack a punch if you're going to stay one town centre. And Lucifer stayed one town centre. So he's got to, you know, really do some damage, get some decisive blows. If he doesn't, he'll just be out ecoed into the game and, and that'll be curtains. But he does have some opportunities in the late game with the Ottoman Bombard, the Great Bombard, which does so much splash damage. Such a fearsome unit. Is Bahi going to dive in? Now, the English are probably the best civilization for, well, if your opponent's going to dive in on you because of the fact that they get double attack from their town center. You'll see here in a second. There we are. Eight bow times two ranged. So it's very difficult to dive the town centers like this. Not getting too much value here, loose front, I'm afraid. Now, back at home. Loose front going to the next stage with the Mehmed Imperial Armory. But he's behind an economy quite significantly. And, uh,. They're really, the only real bonus for the Ottomans are the free units from the military schools. But he's not been able to do anything with it. That's why the Ottomans are a little bit confusing at times to play. It's very difficult because you kind of need to leverage the bonus, which is essentially doing damage, right? And unfortunately, this one hasn't been able to. Not yet, anyway. And with Vortex in the castle age, significantly quicker than his opponent, he's been able to get those upgrades. Setting a couple of mana arms, four of them. No blacksmith upgrades just yet, though, for the English. 
heavily reliant on uh, inventory units here, the English, which is a bit of a concern. Because the Ottomans will get free siege works on the map. They will get those uh, mangonels from the Mehmed Imperial Armory. 11 village elite, though. It might not even take 20 minutes for that village elite to really pay dividends. Could be about the next five, six minutes. The better economy will start to fund a lot of war efforts. Take a look at that food income. It's looking good for Vortex. It is still outnumbered, so it's got to be careful. Might look to send a couple of villagers to just extend that network of castles bonus with an outpost. But he feels confident. Of course, he's got those veterancy upgrades, and even if he does get caught in between, he should be able to dish out a decent amount of damage with this mixed army composition. Man of does change a lot. Loose Font going forward across the map with the Sapahi. All right, well, looks like Luce had enough of those outposts. It's going to take them down, but the army for Vortex heading to try and reinforce that position. We'll keep a look in the uh, minimap because those Sapahi are looking to do damage. Will they or not? I'm not so sure. The Ram might be at risk. Longbow's going to focus on the archers, as you'd expect. The Spearmen are going to focus on the Ram for now. The archers are going to try and take out as many Longbow as possible, but it does look like a fight that Vortex should win. Looks like the Sapahi are going to come in from the south, though. Might get a good surround. Going to pick off reinforcements as well with the Sapahi if you can find them. The outpost on fire, no villages to repair, I'm afraid, so that will go down. Oh, he's going to lose this. I think he just lost that building. These buildings have been slightly built. Wasn't able to get it in time. And the Sapahi do pick off some reinforcements. Loses a man of time. About to lose another, potentially. Has to take a lot of hits, though, to get rid of that thing. Does get rid of it in the end. Military numbers are relatively even, actually, which is actually a very big concern for Lucifer, and considering the village account. But such an interesting strategy to have opened up with, the uh, double outpost rush from the English. Looks like the delay tactics has been working quite well for Vortex. On the back of this, this is where things start to get spicy for relic control. This one does have already one to his name. I think at this point now, with Lucifer so far behind the villagers, his only real option is to try and delay this game to the super, super late game if he can. Just mass up a lot of bombards, great bombards if he can even get there. The trouble with that situation is he's got to secure the middle. He needs that gold vein. He does have uh, some stone in the bank, 100. Not enough for a keep though, of course, quite far from it. He's invested in units for now. But certainly he's going to need a keep in the middle to protect these gold veins. And you can see Vortex just getting an outpost just in case he has to fight here. I really like this addition, right? Because the next phase of the game is a contest for the middle of the map and Vortex is going to get an outpost just to get that vision, but also more importantly, to extend that network of castles bonus. Right, looking to start diving in here now, Vortex, trying to dish out damage. And if you can take out a couple of these uh, military schools, it'll certainly put him in a good position. But here come the Mangonels. We talked about it earlier in the game. How that could be a key feature of Lucifer's defense. And it looks like it will be. There are a couple of archers there on the Ottoman side and a couple of Sabahi mostly. Uh, basically, those two units are combining together very nicely. But the outpost there forward there for Vortex, helping out with the network of castles bows. Mangonel shot gets off on those spearmen, dishes out some damage. He can't get close here, Vortex, to that Mangonel. And those longbows could be at risk. Oh, he takes a hit. A decent hit in the end. And this is looking a bit dicey for Vortex, especially with the Mangonel there. Another Mangonel shot comes off, but nice bit of split on the longbows and gets out of there. Manatarms trickling in. They're actually getting a lot of damage coming in, those Manatarms. No real hard counter for them for Lucifer. And I think he's missed out on those crossbows. He kind of needed them. Didn't manage to get them. And now he's going to lose the Mangonel. Gets another shot off before it does go down. Three longbowmen perish, but... With the Mangonel down now, I feel like Vortex will feel a little bit more comfortable about things. Least Fron has to go back to the drawing board. Would like to see a couple more crossbow on the field, though, from him. Heavily on stone. I think he's eyeing up a keep in the middle, but so is Vortex. Take a look at the count. 550 in the bank. And the aggression coming out for Vortex is giving him this map control, right? He should be able to get that keep pretty nicely and safely. Least Fron trying to rush their stone for his. We see the Janitors drafted in. There's no cavalry here for a Vortex, so it won't be dishing out as much damage as you'd want, say, for example, from crossbows against those man at arms. Oh, Vortex. That's a lot of idle villagers. Now they get tasked to do something. 
Heavy on stone. Okay, well, it looks like he's going to go... Well, I mean, he's actually spent some of his stone, I think. He's down to 400. He's certainly done something with it. The outpost will go down eventually. But that's been alive for 15 minutes right from the beginning of the game. Kind of crazy to think about how much value that's gotten. And there's that farming transition for Vortex. English secret weapon. Incredibly strong for their economy. Especially because it scales super well in the Imperial Age when they get the enclosures upgrade. Gonna get horticulture as well to really ramp up food production. Alright, well there's that stone being spent. And a keep in the middle. Oh, it looks like Lucifer's trying to get his one up as well. I'm not sure which one goes up first. This could be dicey. This could be uh, a really pivotal moment in this game. The spearmen are going to look to try and take the supply if they can. The Ottoman archers need to focus on the spearmen, that is for sure. Here comes the engagement. Spearmen do brace against the Sibahi. Janissaries and archers on the back line need to focus on the spearmen to let the Sibahi do their work. The veteran longbows, though, dishing out a heck of a lot of damage. And without the Mehta now, the Mehta was sniped. And that's a big, big difference in the fight now. Because the English have the network of castles bonus. The Ottomans didn't have the meta for the last end of that fight. And both keeps go up in the end. So I guess neither player gets gold. And I think that matters a little bit more for the Ottomans. Because they're going to run out of gold pretty soon. If Vortex can get to that Imperial Age though. He'll get enclosures and have very safe gold access. Make no mistake about it. These gold veins are incredibly important. It's literally the only gold source on the map for mineable gold I would, I would say of course but the English get the enclosure so that's a very nice bonus but here comes a trebuchet made from the keep and that's such a great timing for him because he obviously doesn't need to invest wood into a siege workshop he can build it from the keep getting another trebuchet as well on the front lines and might even look to build one from the white tower uh, it's just going to keep up with the forward keep production and don't forget as well the keep does produce very very quickly It only takes uh, 30 seconds for a trebuchet. He's going to queue up a third. That's uh, actually a really big problem for the Ottomans because the villagers can't repair. And he's going to lose that keep in that forward position. Fortis is going to try and extend his lead with a sacred site and the villager lead. Look at it. 101 versus 58. And that second town center has scaled so well. The military number is pretty similar, but what that age extra economy has allowed Vortex to do is to get to the Imperial Age very soon. Sipahi in good numbers now. They do dive and they are veterancy upgrades in for that. It does have the second ranged armor upgrade. Going to be diving in, but the trouble is he needs to get a lot of village kills, right? He's killed 21 villagers, but still English have double the economy. Here comes the Berkshire Palace on the front position. This is looking dicey from the Ottomans. A bit of a masterclass in English gameplay for Vortex. He's got all the sacred sites. He's going to get a Berkshire Palace in the middle. His front's going to be in a big problem. Look at the food income. Double the food income. Such a strong opener. I really do feel like the English are incredibly strong on uh, the Empire Wars game mode. Because of those first eight farms they get. Incredibly strong. I, oh my god. Really? What is going on, guys? If you've been watching Castle Games on the channel recently... I mean, what's been happening? Someone needs to have a conversation with players. There's a gap. I mean... Okay, look, I can kind of understand this. Maybe, you know, he, he built this one first and then wanted to build another mill. And Okay, it got a bit dicey, but this one? What's the excuse there? Uh, it is what it is. Three trebuchets in the middle. Took out that keep and, well, it slowed down a little bit. I think Vortex is quite comfortable. Spearman going to chase out the spy. He's going to wall up as well just to protect his economy. The great economy that he does have. The Sacred Heart in the West might be decapped. It looks like Lucifer wants it himself. Lucifer did get three of the five relics, leaving two behind for the English to snag. Lucifer eyeing up that Imperial Age. And it looks like, well, Vortex is going to let him have it because he's going to get enclosures first. And then he is looking to get the elite upgrade for the Spearman. That'll dish out a lot of damage against those uh, Sipahi. It's going to be Istanbul Observatory for Lucifer. To get him to that Imperial Age. Right at the back of the base, as you can see. Rushing it up with 22 villages, but Vortex does have a lead time on this, right? He has a lead time in that Imperial Age. He's already got the lead longbowman. He's got to keep in the middle. Lucifer's going to run out of gold. That's the big key detail here. It's going to be difficult for him to afford too many bombards. 
We can get a couple free from the Mehmed Imperial Armory, but it does take a little while for them to come through and to be produced. There was an overchop on that wall, so the uh, walls didn't actually help them all that much in the end. Gonna need to re-wall that. Spike gonna dive in, try and take out the villagers on the farms, which is actually quite critical because these are enclosures farms. It means every villager killed, he loses food income and gold income. Gold income looking so solid though for Vortex. 1,300. The factory is, well, it does have a decent number of villages on gold to be fair. And it's because he's earned it. He's earned that position. The three trebuchets now focusing on a defensive keep. It's a very defensive keep. At least one kind of had no option though. And he's going to lose it despite villages repairing. Which is unfortunate. Such things can happen in life. But double the economy for Vortex. This is looking dicey. I think he's just behind, right? At least one's behind on economy, behind a military. It was later on the tech up, and you'll see a master class here for Vortex getting that outpost rush just to delay the Ottomans in a huge way. And the crazy thing is, that often when you look to delay people with outposts, you kind of tower their gold and you know try and deny the castle age. But what Vortex did was genius. Went for the stone, denied the uh, military school production, which is basically what the Ottoman civilization revolves around. They're going to get siege with the Springles to try and take out a trebuchet or two, but only one Springle is not going to cut it. Especially when they run the risk of being pushed so far forward. He's got to be careful here. Please front. Doesn't want to lose the Mangonels for free and the Siege for free. That would be costly. I think he's going to lose the Spring Ult, which is unfortunate. Mangonels deploy against the Man at Arms. A decent hit on them. It looks like the Man at Arms is going to try and dive in, but there's a very narrow pathway to get in there. And he's going to look to repair that. Okay, loose front coming in with the repairs on the Mangonels, which is absolutely huge. Longbows get a couple of hits, but it only takes out two of those Longbows. Mangonels still alive. Gets another hit off. And that's a better shot this time. Killed a couple. Supply coming in from the south for Lucifron. I'm surprised he didn't go for the trebuchets in the end, but went for the longbows instead. And now he's regrouping. Those three mangonels holding the key for the fight back for the Ottomans. Could that be his way back into the game? The trouble is, he needs to damage and he needs to do it now. Take a look at the elite Sapahi upgrade. Those guys look absolutely amazing. Look at their armor. Takes out a trebuchet. Maybe looking to get another one. Does get that second one. Can he snipe a third? Looks like he's going to back, back away for now. Vortex getting a second keep in the middle. Trevor State continues to fire off. And look at that. Loose one down to 64 villagers versus 118. Down to 32 military versus 60. He's going to need a big miracle here. But could come up with the mangonels. Decent shot off. But, I mean, they're kind of missing, right? It's really unfortunate. He's got siege crews, which means that he can garrison units inside the mangonels. He's going to lose one mangonel, it appears. Oh, no, no, he keeps it. No, he keeps it alive. He's repairing it. The man at arms don't. Oh, yeah, I got it in the end. But he got a different one to one that I expected. Two mangonels are still alive, deploying on those longbows that are hiding in the stealth forest somewhat. Man at arms on the front line, tanking as much as they possibly can for the English. But 62 military, there doesn't seem to be all in one place in this fight, to be fair. Maybe some are home. There they are. More are coming. These are elite man at arms. Mangonels deploy once again, gets a good shot off, but only on one man at army targeted. Let's get another couple of shots off if he's going to have any meaningful attack. And the Manatons tank a lot of it. Elise Sapai trying to act as a strong front line with the Janissaries in behind. The Manganos trying to focus on the Longbows as best they can. They're doing a decent job, but the Longbows, they are focus firing on the Janissaries, getting so much value. They counter the Janissaries, uses the arrow volley attack, which uh, reduces the Longbows' time to attack by plus one and lasts for six seconds. Great shot off of the Manganel, though. Didn't get all the value they wanted. Again, doesn't land where he wants to. Great micro there by Vortex, keeping the Mangonel alive. Again, repairs coming in for the Janissaries. Spearman going to dive in with the Man at Arm as well to try and snipe the Mangonel. In the meanwhile, the Longbows are firing off. It's a difficult situation here for Lucifon. Does start to push it back though. Vortex down now to 30 military. He lost a lot in that fight. Didn't achieve that much in terms of damage to buildings, but the issue for Vortex is it doesn't really matter. He's got far superior an economy. Look at the food bank for Lucifron. He's really struggling. Struggling on gold as well. Look at the gold income for Vortex. 1,300. There is a great bombard. Could that be the final grace? The final hope for the Ottomans and Lucifron? One shot's a trebuchet. I didn't know it can do that. That's pretty crazy. And again, defensive keep again. Might look to engage, but the spy just, just diving in a little bit. Too close. Longbowman range. Dishing out damage. Oh, well, look at that. Vortex coming out with a keep of his own. This could be the big fight they were expecting to seal out the deal in the game. Mangonel deploys once again, but now these are elite longbow. They kind of withstand the fire a little bit. Another Mangonel shot comes in. Not that time, though. The Great Bomber gets there as well. An absolute massacre of those longbowmen. He needs a big fight, and he needs it now. He could look to take out that keep, 
Loose one still in the game, potentially. If you can take out the keep, it will certainly help his cause. Keep does go up. But only a couple of shots on it, and it should go down. Trying to defend that wood line there, Vortex. Holy moly. Down to 28 military once again. Vortex taking really suboptimal fights, but again, it just almost doesn't matter when you look at the economy that he's got. Gonna get precision crossbreeding as well. Kind of be bonkers with that food income. Really is. Takes out the keep now. The Ottomans need to get hold of that gold in the middle, right? The very gold that Vortex is mopping up. It does get a big Maganal shot on those villagers, but doesn't kill any. Must have textiles. Here comes the Great Bombard with two keeps. That's going to take some time to break through with only one Great Bombard. Needs to wait a significant time for the others. He might pounce on this Vortex. He might dive on this. He's got 61 military. You can just see how quickly they reproduce, right? Because he's just got such a great economy. He's got the production as well. This could be the big fight we're expecting. I think this is overwhelming. I don't think Lucifer can defend this. Not with only one Manganel. Bombard does back away. Sipai looking to dive in. The Man at Arms going to tank for them. Janissaries on the behind them, but the... Great Bombard does deploy, getting a bit of splash damage. Manganel shots off as well, but the Man at Arms, they are living. There's that arrow volley attack from the uh, Longbowman, sniping as much of the Janissaries as possible. He might even look to snipe out the Manganel, but gets a good couple of hits. Another great hit on the Elite Longbowman. But he's still alive, and if that Bombard goes down, that could be a problem. He's got it alive for now. Oh, look at the healing coming out from the Janissaries, repairing that Manganel, keeping it alive, and it's still alive. It's getting so much value. Lucifer making absolutely the most of his army, the limited army that he does have. Oh, but he loses the Great Bombard in the end. It just is a little bit too overwhelming. The Manganel deploys, but there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Vortex takes the game on regions with an interesting English strategy to open up the game. And from then on, it was all uh, pretty, pretty, pretty systematic. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. Take care and see you next time.